a sister, one with a brother, one family by the Welcome to worship. Glad that you've joined us. Let us begin with an opening prayer. Gracious Lord, feed us with your steadfast love. Draw us to yourself. Bring us into your presence. Open our hearts and minds to hear your voice. Help us to grow now as we fall back into your arms of your love. Meet us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. In rushing wind and tongues of fire, in courage found and strength renewed, in visions seen and dreams made real, in hopes rekindled and fears released, in rushing wind and tongues of fire, come, Holy Spirit, come. Renew us strengthen us and lead us. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Burn in us this morning with holy, your Holy Spirit. We give you the place of our hearts that have been choked by the cares of this world. We give you our tiredness, our sin, our struggles with apathy. We need your fiery cleansing. So forgive us our sins, Lord. In the name of of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you, you are forgiven. May the God of mercy forgives you all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
whose blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly lean on Jesus' name On Christ the solid rock I stand Support me in the whelming flood When all around my soul gives way He then is all my hope and stay On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand Fails his lovely face I rest on his unchanging grace Every high and stormy gale My anchor holds shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found rest in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking This Sunday is Pentecost. It's a church's celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit. We have two readings this morning. First is from Romans 8. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen, it's not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Figuria and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose. For it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, dear friends, in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Why is it that so few people understand the Holy Spirit? A student asked the teacher. The Bible talks a lot about the Spirit. Psalm 51 says, Cast me not away from your presence and take not your spirit from me. When Samuel anointed David to be king, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. God tells Ezekiel to tell the nation of Israel, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, and then you will know that I am the Lord. I have spoken. I will do it, declares the Lord. Jesus talks about the Spirit Spirit coming as the paraclete, the advocate, the helper, the Holy Spirit in, gospel, in the Gospel of John. Paul talks about fruits of the Spirit and gifts of the Spirit. The teacher replied, Once there was a wedding couple that held their reception in a reception hall at a church that overlooked a beautiful golf course. The walls of the reception hall were made of glass so that people could look out over the impressive grounds of the golf course. A well-known band was hired to play the reception. And when the band began to play, the music was so captivating that soon everyone, young and old, began to dance. The people moved to the music, flinging their bodies one way and then another. The reception hall was filled with joy. Well, two men up, drove up in a luxury vehicle to play golf, and from inside their vehicle, the men could see the people in the reception hall jumping and moving around in the reception hall, but they, they couldn't hear the band. Well, seeing the people throw themselves around in the room, they stopped their car, shaking their heads at the sight. Look at those crazy people, one man said to the other. 
Look at the way they fling themselves around. I tell you, the people who go to that church are nuts. Teacher paused after finishing the story. And that's the conclusion people draw when they cannot hear the music to which other people are dancing. I'm indebted to William White for, the, for this analogy. When we hear the music of the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Spirit makes sense. Today is Pentecost. Today we celebrate the coming of the promised Holy Spirit to the disciples. In the Lutheran Church, we don't spend a lot of time talking about the Holy Spirit. Perhaps that's because we've seen how focus on the Holy Spirit can sometimes lead to unhealthy divisions, or how certain gifts of the Spirit have been used as a test for whether one is really Christian or not. And we don't want to be part of that. Perhaps we also don't spend a lot of time talking about the Holy Spirit because, well, the Holy Spirit defies logic, science, or any pretense to our control. Jesus tells Nicodemus, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. I've witnessed one miraculous Mayo Clinic verified healing in my life. Just one. And there's no logic to why that person was physically healed and so many others are not. I have no explanation defies science, defies logic, and quite frankly, defies my sense of fairness. But to deny the Holy Spirit's activity for that person who was healed because not everyone is healed is also wrong. Like people on that first Pentecost, sometimes the Holy Spirit's activity shows up in ways that bewilder, amaze, and astonish us, leaving us perplexed and asking, what does it mean? As we try to make sense of it. And when we struggle to make sense of something we don't understand, there's a temptation to define it strictly in, within the limits of our experience. To conclude like those who scoffed, ah, they're filled with new wine at the first Pentecost. It takes some humility to admit that there may be music that we aren't hearing when we see people moving to the music. Now, that doesn't mean that everything that is new or that we don't understand is of the Spirit. The writer of 1 John tells us, test the spirits. And Jesus tells his disciples and us, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. And when the Holy Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. If we're listening for the music of the Spirit, it's helpful to know what kind of music God plays. And the scriptures can be a great help in assisting us to hear the Spirit's music. Two final thoughts. The first, it can be tempting to reduce the activity of the Spirit to just one thing, so that we make it about speaking or interpreting other languages or speaking in tongues. Or we make it about miraculous healing, or say that it only brings comfort, or that it only props social action for the poor and the oppressed, or that it's only about 
giving insight and understanding of the scriptures, or that it's only about producing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, the, the fruits of the Spirit. Paul makes it clear there are a variety of gifts, a variety of activities, a variety of fruits. Many of you may have experienced the comfort of the Holy Spirit provides when a loved one has been seriously ill or has died. Many of you may also have experienced the comfort of the Holy Spirit interceding with you, for you with sighs too deep for words when you were comforted in situations where you didn't even have the words to pray. Finally, I find Luther helpful. Luther stressed that the Holy Spirit is active now. Right here, right now, that God is speaking to us through the activity of the Spirit in the songs, in the hymns, in the prayers, through the liturgy and scripture, through the sermon, through the sacraments, through the conversations we have. It's helpful to recapture Luther's understanding of what's happening here in worship. We're not just a group of like-minded individuals who have gathered to reinforce our beliefs. We're not just another social group like those who gather at a country club. We're not people bound by similarities. We're people bound and knit together in and by something far deeper by the Holy Spirit's activity right here right now. Now, do we always feel it or see it? No. Sometimes we're deaf to the music. But that doesn't make it any less real. Pentecost is not just a once a year historical remembrance of something that happened a long time ago. The church is not a museum for what was. Nor is it a school simply to teach about who and God, what God is. The Holy Spirit doesn't just talk about God. It does what God does. It creates. You and I are the body of Christ living now. Because the Holy Spirit is still active, calling gathering, enlightening, and sanctifying each and every one of us individually and as together we gather. The Holy Spirit is about the Spirit's coming as an ongoing active movement of God that creates, empowers, and sustains faith. It gave the disciples the ability to understand and communicate to people who spoke different languages, and it moved them to boldly proclaim the mighty deeds of God. Can you hear the music of the Spirit? How is it moving you to dance? Amen.
Please join me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. You will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their need. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew. Teach us to love as you would love and do what you would do. We give you thanks, gracious Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for its presence in our lives, for the way that it works in, through, and even in spite of us. Create in us clean hearts and renew your spirit in us. We look to you, Lord, for you are our life, our hope, and our strength. Amid all the distractions and voices of this world, help us to hear your voice, your call, the music of your Holy Spirit playing in our lives. Help us to follow where you have led the way. Help us as we seek to be the people who carry out our mission in the world, gathering those who have strayed, binding up the injured, strengthening the weak. Give us courage and strength that we need to stand with you against those who would exploit and scatter your people. Comfort us in our times of affliction Take us by the hand and walk with us that we might have the courage we need to face the challenges before us. We give you thanks that you forgive us when we falter and grant us the healing we need. We especially ask today, Lord, for your health and healing for all those battling cancer and other long-term diseases and conditions. We lift up to you today, Trent, Belva, Emily, John, Randy, Julie, Michael, and Bill. Comfort all who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray today especially for the family of Pastor Carrie Tokheim on her loss. Give her family the special sense of your comfort and hope. We ask for the end of senseless violence and ask you for the protection and care of all those who seek to keep us safe. We lift up to you all those who are victims of war and violence and ask for your presence, help, restoration and justice in all the places torn by terrorism, war and conflict. We specially lift up to you Palestine and Israel, the Ukraine and Russia, and wherever people are experiencing the ravages of conflict. We ask for your help in our own country. Heal the divisions among us and help us all work together for the common good of all. As the end of the school year draws near, grant to students the ability to demonstrate what they've learned. Bless teachers and administrators and all school workers in their work. And bless the education system that useful knowledge may be learned. Bless our work in our families and assist us as we seek to follow you. Grant us the continued help and guidance of your Holy Spirit in all we do. Oh God, you've called us, your servants, to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. All these things and whatever else you see we need, we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we thank you for the ways in which you support us here at Our Saviors. We can do far more together than we can do alone. Thank you for the gifts of your time, your energy, your talents, and your resources, as well as your financial help. Remembering all that we are and all that we have are gifts from you and from our God. We pray now our offertory prayer. Gracious God, thank you that your promises are sure and that you are faithful. We can rely on you. Help us to find joy in the offering of our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others. Help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. May you cause the seeds that we sow to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a number of important announcements uh, this morning. It's with sadness that we received the news that Pastor Kerry Tolkheim passed away on May 9th. Pastor Kerry was involved in ministry at Our Saviors for over 12 years. The family is planning a private memorial service at a later date. It seems appropriate, though, that we here at Our Saviors pause for a moment to remember, reflect, and give thanks to God for Pastor Terry's ministry among us. So we'll be taking a few moments within the worship service uh, next Sunday to remember her. And we'll also have a, a short clip included uh, in next week's online service for that purpose. This online service was started the first Sunday of COVID over four years ago. And we know that there's still an average of about 120 views within the weeks following the posting of the service. But we don't know who, from where, or how we might grow in developing a connection with those of you who are worshiping online. So we'd love it if you would participate in a short two-minute, five-question survey. We're interested in your ideas about ways we might improve your experience of the service and meet any needs you might have for engagement. You can use this QR code, or look for a link in the weekly email, go to our website at oscl.org, or pick up a paper copy from the office to complete the survey. We appreciate your willingness to assist us in providing the best spiritual experience we can. The outside frames for the stained glass windows have been installed and the glass has been ordered. And last week we signed a contract with a construction company to begin work on the sound system cabinet. So thank you to those of you who have contributed towards these projects. If you've not had a chance yet to support these needed improvements and would like to, your gifts are appreciated. There are a number of youth events, activities, and sign-ups available here at Our Saviors. Summer Blast is back, and there's a sign-up for that. There's also opportunities to make a blanket for seniors, scholarship opportunities for Camp Wapo, mission trips, and opportunities to sign up for Vacation uh, Bible School, both as participants and as helpers. Watch for the weekly email, look at the website, or contact Amy at the church for more information. Receive the blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.